Welcome to the fight with Teddy Atlas. I'm Ken Rideau, joined as always by the great Teddy Atlas. Today's episode is brought to you by today by Teddy's audio book, Atlas from the Streets to the Ring: A Son Struggle to Become a Man. Available on Audible.com. Check it out. Super interesting book. If you haven't, if you've read the book, there's some additional material in the audio book that I think you'll enjoy. Teddy, let's talk about the upcoming uh, top-ranked card at, at MSG this Saturday. Terrence Crawford versus Me Machine Cavalakis. Um, interesting card. A lot of good fights on there. A lot of interesting fights. Uh, you got Tiafimo Lopez versus Richard Comey in the Comey. That's the most competitive. That's the most interesting as far as if you really want to... Um, if you want to watch a fight with an argument on either side instead of an A-side, B-side. Mm-hmm. But well, let's get right into that one then, because that one is the most, like you said, it's the most entertaining and I think probably the most anticipated. A lot of implications uh, to see who wins this, because basically who's going to who's gonna get a chance against Loma next. And uh, these two guys will be doing their best to make their case. Um, what are you looking for here? Well, I think what's interesting about the Comey-Lopez fight is that Aaron and top rank they want Lopez to win badly. Um, this is really important. I mean, obviously, you're the promoter and you have a big deal with ESPN. You want all you guys to win. Um, but in this case, even more so because it's a business and it's about the app. It's about part of it's the, uh, the I mean, part of what Aaron brought to the table uh, to make his deal with ESPN was that they would be able to build the app with boxing. And the streaming and the app is what's the future with all these networks. They all look at the zone. Everybody's looking to build up the app. And so it's about the audience. And Aram and Top Rank with Lopez, look at this kid. He's 22 years old. He's a good talent. He's he's a puncher. He's charismatic. Uh, as I said, he's a young kid. Uh, he's electric. He... He gets in a ring, he knocks guys out. Uh, he's something you can sell, but he's one other thing. He's Latino. And I'm not exactly sure where he was born. Rob will find that out for me. But, you know, obviously he's Latino. He's got a Latino following. And they look, everyone wants to find the next Canelo. Mm-hmm. See, I went a different path than, than you think that I'm going to go. You think I'm just going left hooks and right hands. No, they. it's, it's about knowing what this business is about and and hopefully for the fans, us being able to enlighten them and help them a little bit in some of those areas. And a lot of the fans, we have smart fans, they already know what I'm saying. But because everyone wants the next Canelo because he brings that great Latino following, that la- great Latino audience, and that means pay-per-view numbers, baby. And that means the app and maybe new subscribers. So they look, they be in top rank, look at Lopez as a possible, possible next Canelo. As a, I mean, Canelo's the king. But maybe as an heir to the throne of being able to bring that audience because of what I just said. You know, he's, he's charismatic. He, he's electric. He's got power. You know, he knows what to say. He knocks a guy out. He does a backflip. And, and they, and he won, they need one thing now. They need a title. They need a title. But, Sometimes you get a title, you get lucky. You're not supposed to. Anytime you fight for a title, it should be tough. But sometimes you get lucky, you get in the right spot. In this case, they're fighting a guy who deserves to be a champion. Comey is a legitimate guy. And so it's a legitimate fight, a legitimate test uh, for this. I'll get to my prediction later. But it's a legitimate test uh, for this fight. And again, you can walk in the back door sometimes for a title. You just get fortunate. But uh, quite frankly, Joshua, he walked in the back door when he won the title. Uh, they, they overpaid the guy, but they paid him because they needed that fight. They knew that they were going to destroy. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Baba, give me the name of, of the guy that Joshua won the title against uh, when he won the title. It was against the Southpaw. And it was just... Again, you're fighting for the heavyweight title. You think you're fighting Joe Frazier, you're fighting Muhammad Ali, you're fighting George Foreman. You're fight- No, no, sometimes you get lucky, you know. And Joshua, and he went out there and he knocked the guy out in one or two rounds. Uh, and it, it was just, 
you know, it was waiting for him to just go and say, that's mine, you know? <laughs> and sometimes you do get lucky that way with a title. This case, Comey, is a legitimate challenge. So it's an interesting fight. It's the most interesting fight on that card. You put a lot of names on that card with Crawford, and you put Conlon, the Irish kid. You put all, it's going to bring Irish fans there to New York. They've been building that up. We'll talk about that fight later. But this is the most legitimate fight, the most real fight. And again, Top Rank has a lot invested in this kid Lopez that if he can win, they think they can ride on his back to bring that, that Latino audience on his back the way Canelo does. Mm -hmm. That's what they're hoping for, that they can build him into that. And, and who knows? They might even be looking to build against... They, they can't make too many marquee fights because they don't own those fighters. Mm -hmm. You know, like Crawford, we'll talk about him in a minute more, but Crawford, for as great as he is, and he's great. I mean, I got him number one or two, wherever you want to put him. I got him two. I got Lomachenko one, but I can flip-flop. I have no problem. Uh, either one, that's how good they are, both of them. But there's no marquee guys, and uh, Crawford, all the marquee welterweights that you want to see him all across the street with somebody else. Yep. So, so you're never going to see him in, with the best guys. And so... If Lopez wins, again, they can build him up to bring this massive Latino audience over to them, hoping that it'll help him with the apps and make the executives at ESPN at least hear what they want to hear, see what they want to see, hopefully. But they also could make a marquee fight. They could look to make maybe a fight with him and Lomachenko, you know, so who they have right in their home. Mm -hmm. they, they do have that in their backyard. They do control that. So there's a lot on the line for them with this Lopez. So I think I set the stage properly first for the fans that that's what's on the line for the promoter there. And uh, Comey, Comey is, a, is a good, solid fighter, but he's lost two times. You know, Lopez is a guy that a lot of people were disappointed in his last fight. For the Japanese fight, he Akatani. went to distance. See, he went to distance. and uh, But I think that fight's going to help him in this fight. I agree. It's going to help him. It's going to prepare him. It's going to uh, get rid of some of the questions, uh, you know, some of the doubts in his head, some of the, the bats in the belfry, mm -hmm. so to speak. Get rid of those bats. You don't want bats in your belfry. Get them out of the attic. You know, what are those bats, Teddy, you're talking about in the belt? Well, can I go the rounds? You know, can I be with this level guy? Can I be, can I handle this? Can I? And the answer was, yeah, I can go the rounds. Yeah, I could be better. Who held me back? I held myself back. You learn in those kind of fights, and you learn at the right time just before you have to learn, mm -hmm. just before you fight the biggest fight in your life. So I think that fight is going gonna, is gonna to help him going into this fight. And Comey's a real, like I said, a real challenge. Uh, a lot of guys have now feeling that they like Comey in a fight. Well, Comey's uh, only two losses, split decision losses to uh, Dennis uh, Sharikov, Shafikov yeah, and, and uh, Easter. Robert Easter. Yeah. Split decisions. Split both. decision losses, but again, he lost. Yeah, and and those guys that you just mentioned, they're they're solid, but uh, they're solid guys, but they're they're not Sugar Ray Leonard mm -hmm. or Tommy Hearns yep. or or Penel Whitaker or you know any of those. I mean, they're not somebody that you know you say, oh my, okay. But uh, so he he did lose. He's you know I always say one of the great things that an undefeated fighter has going for him is that he hasn't learned how to lose yet. Mm -hmm. Lopez hasn't learned how to lose yet, and but. The thing about those two losses, yeah, he lost split decisions. Number one, he lost. Mm -hmm. Number two, he got hurt. In the Easter fight, I believe it was the Easter fight, he got hurt. Yeah. He was, he was hurt pretty badly. That's right. Guess what? Lopez can hurt you. That's right. And Lopez, one thing about Lopez, he, he's got power. He's explosive. There's a difference, power. You know, uh, Ernie Shavers had power. George Foreman had power. But I didn't really know if I'm going to describe them. Um, Max Bear had power going way back. But I don't match the term explosive. They there was more ponderous, mm. like like a like a wrecking ball coming, <laughs> and, and it hits you and it just wrecks everything. But it's ponderous. It's it's heavy. It's it's a cement block, but. But it's it's not a hand grenade going off, mm. you know. Wilder hits you, it's a hand grenade. Yeah, boom, explosive. And I see some of those characteristics in the abilities 
Boy, I'm really building them up for I hope uh, uh, <laughs> Top Rank is going to send us a Christmas card. Uh, but, you know, I don't think so. <laughs> but he's got that he's got that component that I don't give to everybody of explosiveness. That, But it's not only kind of like a... I'm going to be careful with this because he hasn't earned the right to be in this company yet. But a little bit like Pacquiao where... Pacquiao and hear me through not just the power but the ability to get the power to where it has to get to real quick in other words he closes the gaps real fast one of the things that Pacquiao did so great yeah he could punch he was fast but he he had quick feet and he could close the gap he closed the gap on you and he, he before you know it he was in there there was a little you got a little careless you got a little lax you thought you had time you thought you had space and then all of a sudden Pacquiao closes that space real quick and he clocks you, and he hits you real suddenly, explosively. I see that ability in Lopez, where he can close the gaps on you really quick, like a Pacquiao, and you get a little careless for a second, and you think, oh, I got time before he can get, and all of a sudden, your right hand's just lingering a little bit, all of a sudden, whoop, he's in there with a left hook, and what, where'd that come from? He was over there, but now he's here. So he's got that, and I think that's going to play for him against Comey. I think that that's going to catch Comey by surprise because you're never ready for that till it happens. Right. You're never ready. It's not like, oh, I'm going to go with one of those guys to spar with. Where? Where? <laughs> that's a good point. Where? So, you know, and then you say you're ready for it. Oh, you watch the tape. Okay, you see that? Now, when he does that, <coughs> this is what we're going to be ready to do. Yeah, sounds good until you're in there. And and it's kind of like you hear about football, you hear about baseball, all of a sudden the 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 speed hits you. The, sp uh, the the speed of the game is much faster than you thought it was. Exactly. And you say, holy Christ, you know? <laughs> and and I think that Comey's going to experience that. And again, I don't know what the line is on a fight, but I know a lot of people are picking Comey. A lot of people will get the line on it before we finish here. Um, I'm sure Rob will get it for us. But uh, a lot of people are picking Comey. He's he's more experienced, the whole thing. Uh, he's just, you know he's been through the the test uh you know he's he's been tested all that stuff but i believe this 22 year old kid uh is going to be ready to be a star and he's going to do it in an explosive way if i'm right the way he's going to do it hold it, on before you give me a pick let me just say that, that the pick is brought to you by my bookie check him out at mybookie.ag use the promo code atlas for 50 percent credit on your first deposit with that teddy Give us your prediction. Yeah, I, I think that when you have a kid like this and you hope he's going to be what you hope he's going to be, like top rank hopes he's going to be, like oh, everything I laid out, you want to do it in you want to do it in a dramatic fashion. You want to hit Broadway and you want to hit that stage and you want to bring the curtain down. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to bring the curtain down. I know a lot of people in this, a lot of I, I'm not taking the safe pick because a lot of people pick and call me. <laughs> And saying, you know, it's going to go rounds. And it might. It might. I don't have to be right all the time. Uh, obviously, I've proven that. But I'm going to say that he's going to close the gap on him. And Comey is not going to expect what's going to come at him. It's going to come out of the blue. It's going to come out of the sky. It's going to come from above. And all of a sudden, bang, he's going to get paralyzed with a shot that he, he didn't expect from a position he didn't expect. So just to kick off, so... Um Tiafima Lopez is Honduran. He's uh, was born in Brooklyn, but his uh, he's Honduran American. It was uh, Charles Martin was the IBF title that uh, Anthony Joshua had won in a second round knockout with Southpaw. Gotcha. Charles Martin is who um, Joshua won the title from. And right now I'm seeing Comey to win is plus 140. Lopez to win is minus 160, so it's right now in favor of Lopez, but still a narrow margin. Minus 160, plus 140 in favor of uh, Lopez. That's yeah. what I would think. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm going to I'm gonna go, if, if I'm right about this, and as I said, when you have a young guy that you think is going to be a star, you you put him on the biggest stage, you put him in Madison Square Garden on ESPN, uh, you want to bring the curtain down. Mm -hmm. I think he'll bring the curtain down. I think there's a good chance he'll bring the curtain down. I'm going to pick Comey by sudden knockout out of the Lopez. blue. Lopez. Uh, Lopez, I'm sorry, to knock out Comey yep. uh, out of the blue 
in uh in three rounds yeah three, rounds, three wow. or four rounds yeah it's a, i know it's a shock a lot of people come on you do, what, what are you doing there you 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 must be uh you must be eating too many twinkies the sugar got to your head kind of like ruiz you know <laughs> but uh no i'm i'm gonna say anywhere it could be two three four rounds uh early where i'm gonna i think that lopez is again is gonna close one of these gaps and deliver a punch a lightning bolt uh lightning bolt that call me just again in all his training and camp couldn't prepare for the quickness until he realized how quick this guy can close the gap mm -hmm. and can put one on your kisser you know so i'm i'm picking uh lopez uh to make top rank very happy uh to do it the way you want to do it by sudden knockout you think they put him in there with loma right after this fight i don't know i wouldn't I, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. And, and if I was his advisors, I wouldn't. I want to build this kid up, like I just said, build up the audience. You know, let's see if we can get a real following where it can help us. You know, from a business standpoint, it can help us with the app. It can help us with the pay per view. Can we really build that kind of audience up? Mm -hmm. And um, that's what, and, and build his confidence and build him as a fighter. Obviously, mm -hmm. so I mean, you're going in with Loma. You're going in with a whole different animal. You know, a whole different thing here. So you you wanna you wanna give him more time to grow, to grow in certain dimensions mm -hmm. uh, before you put him just in there. You know, because Loma Loma takes uh, he handles quick guys, he handles good punches. You know, he uh, dissects them. Mm -hmm. You know, he he takes them apart. So uh, I I'd, I'd wait and and really make it a big fight and give the kid a better chance to be ready for what he's going to be ready for. And, and listen, time's on your side. You're 22. Loma's, what, 32, 30, yep. you know, uh, 33. And Loma's getting older. Obviously, he's getting older. But he's, I think, and this is something that some people out there are going to be surprised. And I love Loma, and I've been his biggest supporter. I, I put him on my pound-for-pound, 10-pound-for-pound pound best fight list two, three years ago, whenever, when he first came, before his first pro, <laughs> he 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 had one pro fight, one fight, one, and I put him ESPN. The the, the people called me up from ESPN. Are you sure this is correct? What we're reading here? <laughs> I said, yeah, go go with it. He's I got him number ten pound for pound, but he's got one fight. That's right. He's and he's pound for pound already on my ten. And everybody was like taking shots at me. I get it. Not no more though. <laughs> Not no more. So you know, I I see Loma. The only thing that can beat Loma, he's got the mentality of his father. He's not going to get beat because he's making money. He's not going. He he wants a legacy. You know, he wants history. He wants all those things. The thing that beat him is father time that beats everybody, mm -hmm. and and moving up too many weight classes. If you you know he's he's at I think he's about as high as he can go now. When we interviewed him, he said he's as heavy as he can go. Yeah. So uh, those those are the things. But I see a little bit of a sign of him for the time starting to knock on the door. Mm -hmm. A little bit. A little bit. I, I'm not saying everyone's going to see it. And I'm not going to say my eyes uh, are the only ones that see it. Or I'm not going to say my eyes are right. Mm -hmm. But for me, they are. And I just think that I see for the time just, you know, not not a heavy knock. Just just maybe. <laughs> Anyone there? And so I I would wait. The longer you wait, the better you're off if you're Lopez, mm -hmm. you know, for, for that. And um, but that's that's my feeling on on that fight. And then of course, let's go to the Crawford fight now. Yeah, speaking of pound for pound list, we got as you just said, number one, number two, uh, Terence Crawford taking on uh, Me Machine Cavalakis in the main event. Uh, Cavalakis coming off of a um, very controversial draw down in Philadelphia on the undercard of uh, Alex Vosdick fight, which I was there for. I didn't think that um, I didn't think that. Um, Cavalakis deserved that draw. I thought he lost to Ray Robinson, and I can't imagine what's going to happen against Crawford, but I'm going to turn it over to you and tell you what, well, right, what should we look for well, here. Well, first of all, uh, any fighter that I can't pronounce his name is not beating Crawford. <laughs> That's number one. Uh, no, but listen, all joking aside, Cavalakis, um, I hope I'm saying it right, Cavalakis, he... He's a strong physical guy. I'm going to give him more credit than you just gave him. And not that there was any reason not to 
to say what you said. You, you saw what you saw. Uh, some people did think that he didn't even deserve the draw. Uh, I didn't watch it, so I can't really comment on it. Uh, I've heard some people that also told me that maybe they thought he won, that he shouldn't have been a draw. It was close. It was, But it wasn't what people expected. People thought that it was going to be his coming out party, that he was going to go through Ray Robinson. But Ray Robinson's a Philadelphia fighter, South Pole, was a good boxer. He had been knocked out before that, so a lot of people thought uh, that, you know, this Kavalak, this being strong, being physical, being a good puncher, would do the same. But he didn't. He got... he. Um, I'm not going to say he got taken to school, but maybe he did in certain ways. But what did he learn from it? I don't know. What did he learn from that? That's the key. What did he learn from that fight? But I think having said all those things, and I said everything that's fair to say to point out, you know, both sides of it. Uh, he's a strong guy. He's a physical guy. He had a real good amateur career. Uh, he's he's one of those guys with two, three hundred amateur fights. He's got that pedigree, that experience. Um all that stuff, he comes from the, the stable that Lomachenko comes from, the same manager, Agus, that manages Lomachenko and, and, and Volzik and, and uh, you know, uh, Yusik and uh, Kovalev, you know, all, all those. Vazdik? Uh, yeah, I said Vazdik. Oh, sorry. Uh, all, Alex, all, all those fighters. Uh, so um, he's a guy that obviously Vegas has him. He has him for a reason. Uh, with all those other fighters, he thinks a lot of them. This is his chance. Uh, again, a uh, good puncher. Uh, you know, a guy that a lot of people, uh, listen, a lot of people might say that they're letting him fight now, you know, because uh, they feel after the Ray Robinson fight that, you know, he's he's gone as far as he can before he loses to somebody that, that's give him a shot for the title. You know, that, let's do that. Maybe they're thinking that. I don't know. Uh, all I know is he's a guy that is everything I just said. Some people, in fairness, will say he got exposed in the Robinson fight. That, you know, that he's not ready for this for this fight. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. uh, we know one thing with watching Wilder. Wilder does a lot of things wrong, but he's got that great eraser. And, and we've seen him lose, and he was losing six rounds to nothing against Ortiz. And what happened? Bang. All of a sudden, he ain't losing no more. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to say it's that easy. There's a big difference, of, you know, of uh, landing one on Ortiz like Wilder did and trying to land one on Crawford. <laughs> big difference. Yes, I get it. I think Crawford, as I said, he's, he's number one and number two in the world. I got him number two. I could easily make him number one. Kovalovskis is in there with a special guy, a guy that guys who are just what I described, don't beat him. Because you got to be more than physical, more than a good puncher. He handles good punches. He handles physical guys. He has lunch with them because he is special. Because he is more than just a guy that uh, has physical attributes. He is maybe Crawford, and this is going to, this is a big statement, but Crawford might be the most instinctual, instinctual, innate fight I've ever seen in my life as far as pure instincts. I don't know that I've ever seen, I've seen some real, real special fighters at, in person, but I've seen more of them on tape when I had the privilege of being with Custom Auto all those years and Jim Jacobs and had the big fights film collection that now uh, ESPN <clears throat> owns. They paid $80 million for the right to own it. Uh, I, I was able to see that library of film anytime I wanted. The greatest fighters, Henry Armstrong, all of them, uh, who, whoever, Archie Moore, you know, all the great ones. And Crawford is, again, maybe the most instinctual one I've ever seen as far as pure, innate instincts to just... Because you to say, Teddy, the great, great ones make it up as they go along. They have the ability to create it as they go. Just make it up as they go. Come up with something. They don't even know they're doing it. I did a special project a few years ago with, I think it was a couple of years ago, year and a half, two years, I'm not sure, maybe a year and a half ago, with Crawford. We went into a studio. ESPN had me break film down with him with his fights coming up. 
uh, his formative fights that got him to where he got his first title, uh, first 10 round. And I broke film down with him and did this piece with Crawford. First of all, I like him as a person. He's a good kid, an honest kid. And there was something he did that was just caught my eye. And I caught the film of it. I broke it down. I froze it. I said, watch this here. All right, Terrence? All right. And we look, and it was extraordinary what he did. And I said to him, because it's what I thought, I said, Terrence, do you, do you know what you did here? Do you remember doing that? Do you know what you just did? He goes, he looks at it, he goes, no. I said, you, you had no idea? He goes, I never saw it before. Never got pointed out to me before. And I have no idea how I did that. I just did it. <laughs> and, and it was remarkable. And it was true. His, the words from his mouth were like the truth of the words of a baby. Uh, it, I just did it. And that's what the special ones do. They just, at the moment, the moment that comes, the moment that they have to do it, they just do it. They make it up. They create it. They're Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix playing a guitar upside down and making music, note, making notes and hitting notes that nobody else hits. Bobby Fischer looking at a chessboard and seeing moves that no one else sees, that, that, that don't even exist. That, like he's looking, what are you looking at? I don't know what you're looking at. You must be looking at a checkerboard <laughs> because I'm looking at my chessboard and I'm seeing some. I mean, you know, it's Louis Armstrong with the trumpet hitting, hitting notes that weren't supposed to be hit. And that's, man, that's pretty good. That's what Crawford is. Yeah, he's long. Yeah, he's wiry. Yeah, he's a good punch. He carried his power up from the weight class. He's gone up three weight classes. He carried his power. He's got the length. He's got the size to go up in weight class. He's got all the physical attributes. Uh, he controls. He's got a good ring IQ. He's got terrific trainers. They always have him prepared for what he has to be. They do a great job. They really do. There's three of them. Mm -hmm. They do uh, collectively as a team. They do. They're a real team. They do a tremendous job because... I noticed every time I caught his fights on ESPN, he was always prepared for what was in front of him. There was no surprises. He knew what he was facing and exactly what the approach needed to be. So he controls range. You know, he, he does all those things. If he's got to fight inside, he can fight inside. He does all that. But on top of that, he's just got what I just described that very few people have, that pure instinct to do it on the fly to just know what to do. Pull it out of the air. Create it right in front of you. Turn the guitar upside down and start strumming. <laughs> and, um, and he'll do it. He'll do it. And he can turn left to your righty. He doesn't care. Either way. So having said all that, where do you think I'm going, baby? Mybookie.ag. <laughs> Check them out. Use the promo code Atlas for 50% credit on your first deposit. Tell me what happens in the fight. I have Crawford winning by knockout inside of five rounds. Um, I just, again, I think that Kovalovkis is, is a strong kid. He's a kid that, like a lot of these kids, that worked his life to get to this point and had a real good amateur background. It's no knock on him. I just think he's in there with a, with a really special fighter and a fighter that I think takes strong guys, takes physical guys, takes one-dimensional guys, uh, to that extent that, you know, sometimes being physical and just a good puncher, you could be a little one-dimensional, takes those guys apart, mm -hmm. you know, finds weaknesses in them and exploits it and shows it to the world right there. You know, he fought Benavides. Benavides was a strong guy. Benavides was going to do this. Benavides was a good amateur, you know, but when he got in there with Crawford, it was a different story. Yeah. And on top of all that, he's got a good chin. On top of all that, if he does make a mistake, and sometimes he gets a little reckless with his hand placement. Uh, that's one thing that sometimes Crawford gets a little reckless with is stepping out. He might step out with his hand down a little low or throw something with one of the hands. So just sometimes, just a little little careless sometimes in those areas where if you do catch him, you might catch him clean. Mm -hmm. But when that's happened, he's, he's also had the great, the great chin to back him up, yeah. the great belief in himself you know, to back him up. So, again, I see Crawford for my bookie inside five rounds. Well, speaking of, um, speaking of deep amateur pedigrees, another one, another one of the interesting fights on that undercard is uh, a rematch from the 2016 Rio Olympic quarterfinals between Mick Conlon and uh, Nikitin. 
uh, I think a Russian kid. And um, Conlon lost a very controversial decision in the Olympics, and he, like, gave the middle finger, double middle fingers to the judges. I mean, he really went off the rails. I do think he got robbed, having watched the fight. But he really, like, let them have it uh, in the ring and kind of built a little bit of a reputation for himself after that. So finally, they, they were scheduled for a rematch earlier this year, and um, I think Nikitin had a, had an injury of some sort. Now they're, they're, now they're ready to go, and um, that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, what do you think in that fight? I think that, first of all, and I get right to the point, and then I'll break it down, but... I think that St. Patrick himself came back to life and walked into that arena with a shillelagh. You know, the shillelaghs, the wooden sticks. <laughs> of course. You know, he would crack it over the head of the judges <laughs> if they gave the fight to the Russian kid. This is set up for Collins' night. For sure. And again, a lot of people won't like that, but hey, too bad. Lump it. I mean, we, we, we tell what I know to be the truth, what I feel is the truth, was what is documented in my mind from what I see, what I feel, what I breathe, what I understand about this business as the truth. The, this is set up for Conlon. Top rank signed Conlon for this fight. You know, more than this fight, but for this fight. And they signed Nikitin. Uh, I, uh, yeah, Nikitin. I hope I'm pronouncing yeah. it right. Yeah. They, they signed him for this fight. They, they signed Conlon. You sign kids out of the amateurs as prospective stars that you can build. He got robbed, but not as bad as I've seen some. I did four Olympics. I've seen some worse. Yeah. A lot worse. I would, be, agree. I would agree with that. A lot worse. But... I didn't see a lot that were worse where the, where the fighter who got robbed gave the middle finger. <laughs> so that picture went all over the world and it got, it got headlines everywhere and it wound up in the office of Top Rank. Mm -hmm. And they saw it and they say, sign this kid. Mm -hmm. Sign him. First of all, he's Irish. There are a lot of fans. We can build him up in Ireland. We can build him up in New York. We'll put him on on St. Paddy's Day, which they have already. Mm -hmm. I think this will be his sixth time fighting in the garden. He's fought in the theater, which is a small arena attached to the garden in New York, I think five times already. So they're already building that market up for him in New York. They already had him fight several times over in Ireland. So they're doing just what they saw the opportunity to do. We, they saw a kid, an Irish kid. Obviously, he knows how to fight. He's an Olympian. And, and obviously, uh, he's got personality. You know, uh, if, if giving someone the middle finger is, is considered personality. I don't know if that's considered personality. That shouldn't overshadow uh, too much about he does have a, he is a very intelligent kid. I've heard a yeah. lot of interviews with him. No, he, he seems is. like a nice guy. He's just a straight shooter. And I think he was probably, no, no. you know, and got listen, robbed he had of a chance for he, a medal. I, I don't blame him. Yeah. And he had an opportunity to do it because it had become so evident so obvious from past fighters suffering the fate that he suffered. See, other people bled for him to be able to do that. Yes. And I, because he could do that because I did four Olympics. They, Aiba, which back then was running the, uh, the Olympic programs, the amateur program, uh, amateur international boxing associate, whatever it's called, um, they were maybe the most corrupt organization on the planet. Mm -hmm. That's a big statement. And, and they had this guy, Dr. Wu, and I don't even like to call him Dr. Wu. He ran the place. They finally got rid of him. He ran the place, and he was, what a corrupt guy. And I hate to say doctor because there's an honorable connotation to doctor that's, that's really important to me. My father was a doctor. He was a real doctor. He understood the oath of taking care of people, of caring about humanity about caring about life, about just just about the honesty of those things, the, the, the care. And I know you don't have to be a medical doctor. I know you can be a doctor in philosophy. You can be a doctor in letters. I, I, I get it, but I don't care. When you put that word in front of someone, that title in front of someone, doctor, there's supposed to be something honorable to it. Dr. Wu took that away. That's how corrupt this piece of garbage was. And he had me removed, me and my great partner, Bob Papa, 
in the Olympics, in our fourth Olympics together. Uh, it was the one in London. After we called him out on fight after fight after fight, of just ripping the heart out of these poor kids that have been fighting since they're six, seven, eight years old, getting ready for this moment and and not going to the prom, not not going out and playing baseball and other sports, not playing, you know, games out in the, the stickball and enjoying the summers, being in the gyms because they were committed at early ages to being Olympians, to being fighters given up part of their childhood and they finally get to the pinnacle. They finally get to that moment where all that work, all that sacrifice is finally going to pay off and this Dr. Wu and his band of thieves, Aiba, they come in, swoop in there because they got paid off. Yeah, they got paid off. They were so corrupt. They swoop in there and they would just rip these kids' hearts out. Just And, and I caught it and Bob Papa caught it and they came and they removed us from ringside. They, we're not here to talk about that now, so I won't go into it, too, but they removed us from ringside because we were saying what was going on and we were putting a light on it. So the difference between Conlon, Conlon is that while well, these kids, and we got tired of it, I got tired, I destroyed them on the air. I said, that we, we, there was a bus outside that brought the officials. I said, that should be a, a detention center bus. <laughs> Pull that bus up and put all these crooks on it and get them out of here. Get them out of here! I mean, that's, I was so angry because what they were doing to these kids. And we watched a kid from France, and we watched a kid from Japan, and we watched all these kids fall on the floor and cry. And you know why they were crying? Well, just what I just described. That they didn't lose. They had it ripped away from them. They never had a chance. After all that work, someone should have told them that missing a prom and, and not going out and not playing with your friends and, and being in the gym in the middle of July and August when other kids were out in the lake swimming and in the pool swimming and, and at the beach with their girlfriend. No, don't even bother because somebody named Dr. Wu and Aiba are going to rob you. And they're laying on the floor crying. And Conlon, after all of this, with this, all those Olympics, he was aware of that. When it got done to him, instead of crying, he gave the middle finger. That was his way of saying, freak this. I ain't just going to lay down and cry. I'm going to freaking show the whole world what I think of you guys. And I'm glad he did it. And Top Rank liked doing it <laughs> because they said, hey, here's something we can promote. Mm -hmm. So they signed the kid up. And with all the reasons I just told you, said so we can promote. There's a story. There's there's something we can do. And then, as the kid, he's what eleven and zero now, I believe twelve and zero. Uh, I, I like think that. he's eleven or twelve and zero. And so now that he's getting to the place that he's getting to, and they put him on this big card, twelve and zero. They went. I don't know how long ago it was. A year ago, whatever. But they signed the kid that. He got robbed against mm -hmm. the Russian kid. By the way, let's put things in proper perspective. The Russian kid is a tough kid. He's a he's a, he's a kid that had a lot of amateur fights, but he he won a bronze that year. So it's not like he got robbed against the guy who went on to win the gold medal. Exactly. He 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 won the bronze. So they said, Top Rank is smart promotionally. They've been around forever. They said, let's sign this kid up, and at the right time, we'll make the rematch. Mm -hmm. And it's the right time. Mm -hmm. So it's in New York. It's the right time. He's 12 and 0. They, they signed the kid up. Uh, Nikitin only has three fights. Mm -hmm. Although he had WSB fights, World Series of Boxing yeah. fights, I think he had 16 of them. So I think he lost three, to be mm -hmm. honest. He's 3 and 0 in the pros, but he had World Series of Boxing fights, five round fights. I think he had 16. He was 13 and 3. So he really lost already three times. Um, but again, let's, let's, let's give. For the people there that might want to make a phone call to my bookie, you know, whatever. Or you just want to watch the fight um, and be as armed as you can be with as much information watching it so you can make play bets with your friends. I'm picking this guy. You know why you're picking him. Know what's on the line. Know, know what's behind it. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to give you as much as I can. And part of it, as I said, is uh, Nikitin, this fight, was signed because it's the, like I said, uh, whatever they signed them up, they signed them for this moment that we're going to make the rematch and give writers, writers don't write about boxing enough. Give them a reason, give them a story. 
here's a story to write about. We getting back at the guy who took away your dream of winning a gold medal. Conlon was one of the favorites, I think, in the, mm-hmm. that year. So took away your dream of winning a gold medal. Maybe you would have won a gold medal. Uh, there, there's been plenty of fighters that got robbed. Roy Jones got robbed. Uh, Holyfield got robbed mm-hmm. uh, of that moment. Terrible. And, and so it's a story that resonates. So top rank was brilliant. Brilliant. They said, oh, let's sign this guy up. And at the right time, we'll make the rematch. And like I said, now's the time to make the rematch. So they got the rematch. What does it really entail? Well, it entails a guy who's got, he's Trino, um, and he's, he's a busy guy, his style. He's a busy guy. Colin's a good boxer. He's got a little bit of pop in his punch. Uh, Nikitin doesn't. He's a guy that just throws a lot of punches. He throws a lot. He's a busy guy. He's a tough guy, but he gets cut. Mm-hmm. He gets cut, uh, and and again, I never knock a fighter, but you know the the terms from the old time as Mickey Duff used to say to me all the time. Teddy, this fella gets insulted if you miss him. <laughs> he, he's a guy that's not hard to find. He's not a hard guy to find. He's a tough guy. He had all those amateurs. He's a bronze medal winner, but he can't break an egg. He, he's not a puncher, uh, but like I said, he's a busy guy. He's a tough guy. I. In, in handicapping this fight for whether it's my book or it's just you watching a fight and wanting to know in your mind who's going to win or who has the best chance to win, in handicapping this fight, uh, Nikitin, from what I understand, he's got hand problems. He's got hand problems. Uh, he's got a problem with his arm, with his left arm, where I don't know if he's going to be 100% or not in the fight, but he's a tough kid. He'll do what fighters do. If there's an injury, just like football players. Mm-hmm. You know, when camp opens up, you think these fo- football players are 100% healthy? None of them. They all got something. They all, some of them even playing with a cast on their arm. <laughs> so they all got, fight is the same thing. Very seldom do you go into a fight completely 100% healthy. You behave like a fighter. You do what you got to do. But it might be a little bit even more so for this kid. That he's had some hand problems. He gets cut. Uh, but he's a tough kid. He'll be in there. He's never been more than six rounds. Again, all the information you need to handicap, so we give you everything you can. Colin's been 10 rounds. I think he's been 10 rounds a couple times. Uh, So he's been a distance. He's got 12 fights. The other guy's got three fights. Uh, Again, uh, he's been 10 rounds. Colin's never been past six. Uh, I don't don't know that his hands, you know, uh, like I said, uh, completely healthy. I'm going with Colin. Having said that, I don't even have to say that. There's only one guy who is set up to win this fight. Mm-hmm. I, I said all the things inside the ring, inside this squared circle, inside that chamber of truth that matters from, from the tangible things, from the X's and O's, from the physical components of it. I said all the things that matter. But all forget all that. Throw it all out. See, everything I said, take it, throw it away. Because it don't matter. What matters is, one guy is set up by the promoter to win this fight. Yeah, I know you could get hit with a shot and it gets taken away from you. you could get, but let me, I just told you, Nikitin can't punch. He's a tough kid. He had 12 million punches. Yeah, it might, it might be a competitive fight. But at the end of the day, this fight was not made for Nikitin. This fight was made as the coming out party in New York for Conlon to revenge the guy that beat him in the Olympics that he gave the middle finger to that the whole world saw. Mm-hmm. And, um, and there was, like I said, if, if a judge even thought about giving it to Nikita, <laughs> St. Patrick will come back. <laughs> Say, matter of fact, it might be a little tip off of what I'm saying, just a little bit of the bias tip off, maybe. Would you think this would be a little bit of a tip off if you went and you sat behind one of the judges judging the fight, and he had shamrocks all over his jacket, <laughs> would, you, would you think that maybe, <laughs> maybe Nikitin might have a problem getting a decision? Would that maybe <laughs> suggest to you that he might have a problem grabbing a decision here tonight? Anyway, all, all fun aside and everything else, and I mix fun with truth, uh, this fight is all set up for Colin. Uh, Con, Conlon, Conlon has disappointed some people. A lot of people having, you know, having and people probably associated with top rank. They never tell you, they never, they never say it. Mm-hmm. But 
that, that he hasn't developed quite at the pace that they thought he would. But he's a smart kid. He's a good-looking kid. Uh, he's a kid that obviously can be promoted. He's a kid that obviously, you know, knows what to do, you know, in this business. Uh, that's how he got the contract with Top Frank. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a kid who had a great amateur pedigree. Uh, he, he can box, you know. I, I think he outboxes the Keaton. I think uh, he plays Matador to the bull coming at him. I think he cuts him up. I think at the end of the day that Nikitin's the kind of kid that doesn't get stopped. He's got a good shin. He's got mm -hmm. a huge heart. But I think he might stop him on cuts, I'm going to say, seven rounds, eight rounds. Uh, that's that's my prediction. All right, I can live with that. One other fight worth noting there is, uh, we haven't spoken about this, but um guy who was in camp with us in Philadelphia as a sparring partner, Chem Killich, is fighting Steven Nelson on one of the undercards. Great kid, too, a great kid. Great kid, so I'll be looking forward to seeing him. Uh, Who's he fighting? Who's he fighting? Steven Nelson. Uh, what's the record of Nelson? Uh, give me one second. Yeah, because Chem is 14-0. and 0. Yeah, Chem is a... Uh, great kid. I think this fight might also be a... Um, title eliminator That's for one of the belts uh, but Chem's a really nice guy Turkish first uh, maybe the first Turkish pro fighter um, really? or, 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 or he has some uh, some claim to some Turkish record Steven Nelson 15 and 0 um, well, good fight. Yeah, All very right. good. It's been uh, on paper anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is a big uh, title eliminator um, he's been campaigning at light, heavy, and super middle for uh, Steven Nelson. The fight's going to be at super middle, so that will be interesting. I know Chem's been um, living in Vero Beach, Cal uh, Florida for the past probably 10 weeks training with uh, Buddy McGirt. So best of luck to our buddy Chem. We'll be rooting for him. Yeah, there. definitely, definitely. Great, real gentleman. And, and the other spawn partner we had um, was a terrific. Brandon Robinson. A terrific kid. Yeah, Brandon Robinson. really nice guy. Um Guys, please check out Teddy's audio book on uh, audible.com and at Amazon, Atlas, From the Streets to the Ring, A Son's Struggle to Become a Man. Excellent book. Uh, thanks for being with us. Uh, we'll be back after this coming weekend for an analysis of these fights on Saturday. Uh, Teddy, you got anything else? Just remember, finishing with the Colin fight, you know, um, it's all about the green, baby. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> it's all about the green. <laughs> Well, thanks for being with us and uh, appreciate everyone. Please, if you like the show, please leave us a review. It takes two seconds to leave a review on uh, Apple iTunes. It's a huge help for us. And um, thanks for being with us. Bye.